Hello and welcome to my reaction uh, to geography now uh, Cyprus. Well, Cyprus is an island um, in the Mediterranean um, Sea, and um, it is, I think, geographically a part of Asia, but culturally a part of Europe. So, um, Cyprus. Cyprus is um, divided uh, in two different nations and um, two. Um, um, British naval bases and the UN buffer zone, which make it uh, theoretically the most divi diverse or divided kind of, um, island in the world. Um, Borneo, um, the I mean, where Borneo is divided between um, Indonesia, um, uh, Malaysia, and Brunei three nations um, but if you consider well, he will also do it in the video I think I even took his, this um, kind of joke I think from him what this um, what he what I say now uh, but if you, you could technically consider Cyprus to be divided between four different nations um, Cyprus northern Cyprus and um, the British overseas bases and the UN buffer zone but the UN buffer zone is not a country so it's not technically um, right so to uh, um, I mean, in this way, um, Borneo is the most divided country, but he will make the joke as he will say it it's also the video. Anyway, um, I took this from him, I'm not sure what episode. I think it, it should be the Cyprus episode. Or the um, Malaysia or Indonesian um, episode where he mentions this, I'm not sure. Anyway, um, the video, please like and subscribe. Um, and also you see here a little um, um, Christmas... Um, in, in German it is go, called uh, Wichtel, I'm not sure how it would be in um, other languages in English, but here we are with um, Cyprus and also maybe tomorrow or um, on Sunday or so I will react to a geography now, the Republic of North Macedonia, which is a bit controversy, especially with a Greek episode I already reacted to, people told me there that about the differences from Macedonia, North Macedonia and Greece and so. So, if you want me to react to this country next, um, tell me in the comments. And yeah, Cyprus. Also, um, there's also something with um, Turkey and Greece in this episode. So, let's just well, jump into it and enjoy this video. And please like and subscribe. Uh, please, uh, I, webcam, I'm not sure. I would I would back with my hands, but here's a little um, um, Vistel. In the camera, so I don't want to interrupt the camera. But please, please subscribe. You would really help me out a lot. And like the video, share it with your friends, and so on and so on. Let's just step, um, step right into it without further ado. Here we are. One country, two sides, three exclaves, four people groups, and a lot of. One country, two sides, three exclaves, four people groups, and a lot of confusing lines that can give even the most seasoned Uber driver a level five seizure. It's time. Yeah, yeah, he mentioned it already with the divided island. Let's see what we can learn from this episode. To learn geography. Now! Hey everybody, I'm your host Barbie. If you don't know anything about Cyprus, all you really have to know is that it's an island with a lot of fine wine and landmines, a lot of barbecue and barbed wire, spa resorts and spies resorting to spying on... Let's move on. <laughs> yeah, uh, with the mines, um... I I don't know much about the conflict. Uh, I just know that there was a conflict between when some um, when a coup was happening and they was trying to get the island be part of Greece and then T Turkey invaded the north and so I'm not exactly sure so deep into this. Um, so either um he will explain it to me in the video or if you know something that he will not mention or anything else, just mention it in the comments down below. <laughs> the more complex a country is divided administratively, the more I love doing these episodes. I imagine this is how a doctor feels when they go into surgery, removing tumors and transplanting organs and stuff. All right, uh, let's take out this exclave, and uh, here's uh, an autonomous republic. Doctor, remember the border blockades and checkpoint stations. Oh, right. Uh, we'll need 50 cc's of legislative tension. Stop. Let's jump in. Cyprus, an island nation, is located in the eastern Mediterranean Sea, just off the coast of Turkey and Syria, and Lebanon in the Middle East. If you look at a satellite image of Cyprus, you'll see this nice little beige semi-arid island with a uniquely pointed tail at the... That's, that's also interesting. Um, I mean, the shape of the island is interesting. This long panhandle into the ocean. 
Um, but if it's in the Mediterranean, I'm not sure if it's in the Mediterranean, it's an ocean. But um, what's also um, interesting is that on the flag, on the Cyprus flag of the Republic of Cyprus, which is recognized by most of the world, um, the entire country, the, there's an island which you know, shows the entire country, but it's false leading because the northern part is not controlled by Cyprus. Um, of course, I wish it would, but yeah, and there are also talks happening a bit sometimes. I, I heard, but yeah, it's it's funny. Let's let's continue. East end, but if you look at a political map, you'll see this. One thing you'll immediately notice about Cyprus is that the entire country is split by a huge demilitarized line known as the UN buffer zone. This line spans 180 kilometers or 112 miles from Paralimni to Katopirgos. The country is divided into six districts. However, two of these districts overlap. I mean, when I saw this quickly, there are even three. Um, lines. I mean, w one is here, as you see, the small little thing, and then this big one, and then this tiny one is uh, here. So there are three uh, separation lines, and one, I mean, the military pa bases uh, would here allow a direct uh, access through, through the countries. And I heard in the course, yeah, um, 22, 2022 or so, something is uh, recently, there was a street opening for bicycles and um, pedestrians, and people walking. <laughs> um, I'm not sure about this um, term, pedestrian, um, here, I mean, um, it's this, uh, Fußgänger, I think it, I, I know what this means. <laughs> Paralimni to Katopirgos. The country is divided into six districts, however, two of these districts overlap the buffer zone, so it's kind of like eight districts, but not really, but kind of. If you ask a northern Cypriot, they'll tell you that their side contains five districts split like this. Now, why is there a UN buffer zone? Because since the 70s, Cyprus has been divided into two separate main entities, the Greek Cypriot area in the south that makes up about 60% of the island, and the Turkish Cypriot side that takes about 36%. The remaining 4% belong to the UK and the UN. The UK operates the two overseas territories of Akrotiri and Dekelia on the southern coast of the country. These places are operated by the British military forces, although Greek Cypriots are totally allowed to enter and pass through the domain, just not enter the actual bases without permission. Dekelia is even more confusing as it's the only part of the country that effectively cuts off the UN buffer zone from itself and holds three Cypriot exclaves, pronounced this way. On top of that, you have the Akna Road that acts like a single artery that connects Dekelia to its inland Ios Nicolas station. Now, when it comes to the UN buffer zone, most maps typically don't do a good job explaining exactly how it works. It's more like a quadruple border with four lines that are only a few meters wide that run along each other instead of two. These big areas still have fully operating towns and communities that lie within the parallel buffer parameters like the town of Athino or Tuloi, but they do have double checkpoints when going north or south. It's really confusing. It's like a part of Cyprus but surrounded by the UN. Where it does get weird though is the capital city Nicosia, which acts as a capital for both the north and south parts of the country. This is where the most notable- I, I, There's something I, I want to mention here about Nicosia. Um, here, uh, this um, map, uh, where was it? Uh, maybe it was also on the, um, on the germs. I mean, that's the article about the geography of Cyprus, um, Wikipedia article, I will link in the description. But there is something else I want to show to you. It is, I think, um, in the German language. Where is German? Why is German not here? Okay, let me see. Uh, I need the German article about this. Uh, um... And it was not. It was not this. It, I had a different article uh, when I was looking for this. Oh man, it, it's complicated, but uh, it's worth it. Um, believe me. Mm. It's super. That's how it is called in German. So, um, that's being said. Um, I think uh, there is something. There was something here which is quite interesting. A bit down here. Um, so uh, Nicosia and Lefkosa is probably is I think the Turkish name for the capital um, of the island. Um, I see. I I, I I want to lean out of the window. So don't misunderstand me. I don't know about the conflict. I'm not so deep into it. But um, they just just they just just um, kind of join and a whole island nation and leave the military out. Um, and yeah, one one country, one island, uh, neither part of Greece, neither part of um, Turkey, finito. But um, I'm not so into the conflict. I just said still anyway what I think. Um, but I think, and I really my myself out of the window here that military or violence um, actions are not a solution to anything. So. Whether now um, Turkish uh, invaded the island or um, a, a coup happened, it's both shitty and yeah.
All the military from the island gone. P go away, and then uh, they can be a peaceful um, union or so. Or two different states. I mean, um, the UN could also just recognize Northern Cyprus and Finit also. Just two states. Who cares? Um, people who are too nationalistic are also just stupid idiots, in my opinion. So, you may say what you want about nationalism, about um, you know, being proud of your own country, whatsoever, what the fuck. I don't give a shit. Um, being proud of a country is stupid. Um, nationalism is stupid, in my opinion. I, I would like it if all the countries in the world would just be worse, just... Um, they could coexist, who cares, but um, there would not be not be any um, controls at the borders. There would not be... I mean, borders in general are a stupid concept, um, in my opinion. Um, I think the whole world should be just... Um, Either one country, or if if you want many countries, but without any checkpoints, without any border controls, without any mm, military, without any uh, all of this stuff, there is. I mean, John Lennon already said it long long before me, and I this is in, in his song Imagine. I think it perfectly describes the perfect word, which we would all um try to reach at some point. I know it will take maybe hundreds of years. I mean, I look at the world currently. I think it would take uh, thousands of years until we can reach this um, point of point of time or development of society where we can live in such a world like he described in his song. But we should um, thrive for this and work towards this. So this might happen one day. Let's continue with the video. It's the capital city, Nicosia, which acts as a capital for both the north and south parts of the country. This is where the most notable division can be found, and it's kind of weird. Walls and gates slice right through the city, which have left certain buildings and streets untouched and abandoned for over four decades. The biggest casualty of the division, though, would have to be the old airport, Nicosia International, which is all but abandoned and empty today. If you want to fly to Cyprus today, you will either have to arrive at Larnaca or Paphos Airport in the south part, or Erkan Airport for northern Cyprus. Finally, you have the strange Kokina exclave that operates under the Turkish northern Cypriot area as a military base cut off by the rest of the entity from another separate UN buffer zone. Now regardless of all these barriers and walls you can still cross over the sides. Today there are seven checkpoints and it's not that hard. All you do is you just show your passport to both the Greek and Turkish police and then head through. If you go by car you will need to purchase new insurance on the side that you're entering and you'll only be allowed to stay for up to 30 days. So that's about it. Simple right? All right let's move on. But at least it's not an extra conflict. At least they're not um Bombing in Japan, so, so when you can just check uh, through and uh, visit other sites without any big problems, it's at least something. I mean, it's it's good that there's a kind of um, neutral stand, so there's no um, active violence. The same also with I think uh, theoretically at least North and South Korea. There's also not no there's no peace treaty after the Korean War. I think there's just this kind of um, standstill, but it's better than an active war or active conflict. So that's that's great. Cyprus is said to be the legendary birthplace of Aphrodite, the goddess of love and beauty. And despite all the barbed wire and abandoned buildings, this country still holds its ground in aesthetics. First of all, the country has a dry, relatively warm Mediterranean climate with rainfall in the winter months. Cyprus is made up of two main mountain chains, the rugged Troldos chain in the southwest, which contains the highest point of the country, Mount Olympus. Yeah, they kind of copied Greece on that one. And the smaller Kyrenia mountains that parallel the north coast. The country has only seasonal rivers that flow from the mountain snowmelt after wintertime. Otherwise, most rivers dry up by summertime, leaving empty riverbeds. The government has really tried to combat the irrigation problem by building dams and reservoirs to supplement the crop fields during the drier months. After the split, the north side took most of the grain and citrus and all of the tobacco fields. However, the south took most of the fruit orchards, livestock and vegetable fields, and nearly all of the grape vineyards. Beautiful- You see, uh, it would be best for the whole island if they would work together. They would have um, the, other, other, the crops of the other side and would have a greater potential in the world. They could reach more and um yeah. There are other countries also with um culturally um, minorities or bigger minorities or even divided um populations where forty percent is Muslim, sixty percent is Christian or so I mean they uh, take for example Nigeria. Um it's also very divided divided I think. I watched the episode I have not reacted to the countries so far. Whereas the north, I think, is more um, Muslim and the south is more Christian, so it works, kind of. Um 
Tropical beaches line the coast of all sides with shrubs and eroded rock cliffs like the Aia Napa Beach. Trees are taken seriously now as deforestation has hit the country hard in the past half century. Only about 17% of the country is classified as woodland and logging is heavily monitored. It's actually totally legal to take figs and olives off of your neighbor's tree, but illegal to cut down the tree even if you own it. Speaking of neighborly interaction, let's jump into the most controversial part of this episode. Ugh, controversy, controversy. We need a distraction. Here's a Korean guy playing the bagpipes. So as you could kind of gather from the previous two segments, Cyprus is kind of divided. Essentially, the country is populated by two main ethnic groups that have quite an interesting history on the island. First of all, Cyprus has a population around 1.2 million and it has the highest percentage in the EU of working adults with tertiary education. Although the numbers are a little hazy and debatable, the entire island is made up of about 77% Greek Cypriots and about 18% Turkish Cypriots. The remaining 5% come from a wide range of other nationalities like Armenians, British, Russian, and even a sizable Vietnamese community has settled in the country as well. Vietnamese community again. I had recently another country with Senegal, I think, that also a Vietnamese community. It's interesting. Now here's where we finally address the elephant in the room. How on earth did all this internal conflict arise on such a small island? And by small island, I mean the third largest in the Mediterranean. Well, not getting too deep into history, Cyprus has gone through a lot of crazy times in the past few millennia. The earliest recorded documents show that it was first inhabited by the Mycenaean Greeks, and then the Assyrians, Egyptians, Persians, and then the Greeks again, and then the Egyptians again, then the Roman Empire, then the Arab Caliphates, the French, the Venetians, and then the Ottomans for like three centuries, and then finally the British until they broke free and became annexed in 1914, and then independent by 1960. And that's when the real domestic conflict began. Long story short, 1974 was the year when all the fighting went down and this became a thing. To this day, Turkey is the only country that recognizes the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus as a sovereign state, whereas the Republic of Cyprus kind of acts as the poster child for the entire island on the world stage. So that's why Cyprus looks the way it does, and that's all I'm gonna say. The funny thing is, most Cypriots to date, north or south, want a reunification plan and think the whole division is just a stubborn older generation problem that shouldn't be carried out today. Culture-wise, of course, Greek Cypriots are incredibly influenced by Greece and Greek culture. However, they do speak... The young, the young Cyprus people seem to um, have figured it out. Why um, this stupid conflict um, holding up from something long ago and also why not just reunification? I mean, in this case, it is not... I mean, I have not heard that um, Northern Cyprus is not so political, so much different, like for example Northern South Korea or East and West Germany, um, that a, a unification would make no sense um, in some minds, and they're just a, a different religion and uh, maybe a different culture a bit, but this, I mean, they should not um, uh, keep the, I mean, I think, I think the young people are the right there. When they think it's just the uh, older thing. Um, I'm not trying to do conflict, but I could imagine this. Um, I have not heard that there's a political difference. So, if I'm wrong and the Northern Cyprus is indeed uh, more socialistic and the South is not or otherwise, then um, tell me in the comments plan and think the whole division is just a stubborn older generation problem that shouldn't be carried out today. Culture-wise, of course, Greek Cypriots are incredibly influenced by Greece and Greek culture. However, they do speak with a pretty interesting dialect that sometimes even Greek people from the mainland have a little trouble understanding. Many of the words have a slight Turkish or Arabic undertone, and there's a whole slew of Cypriot slang that isn't even used in standard Greek. Northern Turkish Cypriots, of course, identify closest to Turkey. Both sides, although heavily identified with their respective cultural religions, Islam for the North and Greek Orthodox for the South, the Countries are both run under secular governmental systems. Most women in northern Cyprus don't even wear headscarves, let alone typical conservative Muslim dresses, and alcohol is sold and drunken everywhere. One thing that really sticks out though would be the proficiency in English. Since Cyprus was under British rule for a while, English became the de facto language, and around 80% of the country actually speaks it. Of course, Greek and Turkish are the official languages, but English signs and translations can be found everywhere, and typically you can strike up a conversation in English with most people on the island, especially the younger generation. This also helps out when the tourists start flocking in, which makes up a huge huge portion of Cyprus's economy. Let's talk about the interactions they have with outsiders. Remember how in the Bosnia and Herzegovina episode we mentioned how the friend of your enemy can sometimes by default end up being your friend as well? Well, that's kind of how it works with Cyprus. When asking who their friends are, you kind of have to address which side of Cyprus you're referring to. If you're asking in the north, then of course they'll say Turkey and all the friends that come along with the package with Turkey, like Azerbaijan or Pakistan and Afghanistan and so on. If you ask the Greek Cypriot side of Cyprus, you'll probably get a different response. As part of the EU, Cyprus is kind of like the new guy that walked into the party with a few scars that- I mean 
this could even be a good um, opportunity if we would want to um, let um, Turkey join the European Union, Union. So Turkey joins, North and Cyprus also through this joins. Um, I mean not through this; it's a different states in Turkey, of course. But um, yeah, it, it would make it then also a unification maybe easier when uh, Turkey would join the European Union. I'm not sure if I would want this, uh, but theoretically why not? Um, I mean, the, the ideas of the European Union are difficult, um, especially recently. Um, I think it, ha it changed a lot um, over the last uh, 20 years or so. That, um, but about the European Union, there are many goods and bads, which I will maybe talk about in a different video, but not now. I'm, I would need to work out something for this a bit more. Everybody is slightly intrigued by and keeps their eye on as he walks over to the punch bowl. Israel and Armenia have always been close and many Armenians live in Cyprus and Armenian is a recognized minority language. Israel shares the same Western value of free market and trade as well as free democracy. When it comes to their best friend, however, hands down, no doubt, the Republic of Cyprus will tell you that Greece is their best friend. Cyprus is the only other fully sovereign state in which Greek is the official language and heritage of the residents. Cypriots and Greeks absolutely love each other and will always have each other's backs. In conclusion, the island nation of Cyprus is a beautiful, well-educated, economically stable hot mess. Who knows what it'll look like in the future, but let's hope it involves fewer blockades and more block parties. Stay tuned, the Czech Republic, also known as Czechia, is coming up next. Um, yeah. Mm, um, I've not reacted, of course, to Czechia so far, which means, of course, I could have done it, but I will do it maybe one day, but yeah. Tell me in the comments what you want me to react next to and subscribe please to my channel, it would really help me out a lot. Um, please do so, it's just a small click on the red button. Mm? <laughs> and yeah, we'll see you again in the next video. See you.